Aubrey Cummings and Martin Carter's contribution to the, to the development of Caribbean art and culture. This essay seeks to discuss the ways in which Aubrey Cummings and Martin Carter contributed to the development of Caribbean art and culture. Aubrey Cummings and Martin Carter grew up in Ghana and they were recognized for their various interests being art, music, and poetry. Both have contributed and played a major role have played major roles in the growth of the Caribbean by bringing their own talents and strengths and using them for, for the development of art and culture in the Caribbean. In this essay, we will look at Aubrey Cummings' contribution to music and paintings and Martin Carter's contribution in poetry and polit politics. Point one, Aubrey Cummings grew up in the Albert Town, Queenstown neighborhood of Georgetown, Guyana. He taught himself to play the guitar. The world of music and entertainment excited Aubrey, and in 1965, at the age of 18, he joined a group called Bumble and the Saints. He then went on to be the lead singer for the Rhythm Aries and the Dominators, but left in 1973 and helped form another band called the Tell Stars, having a popular hit with So Lucky In My Life. In 1978, Cummings migrated to Barbados and built an active career as a guitarist and violinist. His guitar work attracted critical acclaim and he was a regular contributor to the Acoustic Guitar Festival organized bar by Barbados National Cultural Foundation. I believe that Aubrey Cummings contributed greatly to the development of Caribbean arts and culture. He believed that popular music contributed to the healing of Guyana during the 1960s and 1970s and can do so again. His musical career is a reminder of the widespread influence of music in Guyana's social life. Let's go. Okay, um, Aubrey Cummings heavily impacted the music and art in Caribbean culture after Aubrey Cummings decided that he was satisfied with the choices he had made in his music career and he focused on painting again in his early years in Barbados. He received help from a man called Paul Altman who provided him with space for a studio. It was in the space that he developed the Birds and People series of fabric painting that made lots of sales. He is well known for his, his portraits of, of Barbadian music, sorry, musicians who had died. By 1985, Aubrey had established his career in painting. He, he was invited to produce pieces for the 2002 Bar Barbados Jazz Festival. He produced three pieces dis, depicting international and local jazz musicians in performances. These pieces received positive reviews and he launched a new series of paintings. By 2003, Aubrey's art was displayed in leading galleries in Barbados. The evidence is clear that Aubrey Cummings contributed, contributed greatly to the, to the development of Caribbean art and culture. Another excellent individual. Are you hearing me? Yes. Oh, okay. Another excellent individual who has contributed heavily to the, development, to the development of Caribbean art and culture is Martin Wilde Carter. Martin Carter is a Guyanese poet and a well-prided activist. Hence his love for incorporating worldwide civil issues into the poems he produced. As it relates to Caribbean art, Martin Carter provided a substantial amount of poem pieces for example, The Hill of Fire Glows Red, This is the Dark Time, My Love, and University of Hunger. Martin Carter was one of the first male poets that contributed to the Caribbean culture in a positive way, as it relates to the fact that he always believed in a peaceful and decent way of living. In 1989, he was awarded the Guyana Prize for Literature. Thus, Martin Carter has brought to the table of Caribbean culture influencing people to be devoted to one's country 
through self-independence and seeing the world at a political standard. By creating poems, this gave others the opportunity to share and justify their political views as well. Uh, it's not moving, I don't know why. Just take your time. Yeah, man, because sometimes the computer, maybe you have your computer up all night and you didn't turn it off. So it usually affects the slide. Go ahead. Okay, there. Point four. Aside from poetry, Martin Carter has also immensely contributed to the Caribbean art and culture by being a political activist. He started his own journey by joining the People's Progressive Party after the British Guyana War. However, after the party won elections in 1953, they were removed from power by the British for being a communist organization. During this time, Carter himself was also arrested and imprisoned at the detention camp in New Amsterdam, and this only encouraged him further to fight for his freedom. After being released from prison, he published his best known poetry collection, Poems of Resistance from British Guyana. Carter later worked as an information officer with a multinational company, and he became Minister of Information in a union dominated by the People's National Congress. In 1966 to 1967, he represented Guyana at the United Nations. Concerned about the corruption in PNC government, he resigned from this position in 1970, continuing to express these issues through poetry. He gave the Guyanese people a voice to go against the British government and his words continue to affect their lives till date. Conclusion. In summarizing, it is safe to argue that Aubrey Cummings and Martin Carter contributed to the development of Caribbean art and culture. Aubrey Cummings contributed towards music and painting, and he is now a and he is now known as a cultural hero. Martin Carter contributed significantly by playing his role as a political activist and an outstanding poetry writer, whose work influences and drives the passion in people to be devoted to one's country. You have come to the end of our presentation. All right, thank you very much, group four, group five. Group five. Yes, present there, coming. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ladies. We're at group five, and we will be doing the peel effect on four ways Rastafari influence extra regional societies. The group members are Lois Case, Paris Clare, Joanna Rose, Avril Sinclair, and Jamile Thomas. What is peel? The acronym peel stands for point, evidence, explain, and link. The Peel Paragraph Method is a technique used in writing to help structure paragraphs in a way that represents a single clear and focused argument, which links back to the essay topic or statement. It allows you to create a paragraph that is easy and accessible for others to understand. Point. Start your paragraph with a clear topic sentence that establishes what your paragraph is going to be about, the point of your essay. Evidence. Use a piece of evidence for an example that helps to reaffirm your 
initial point and develop the argument. Explanation. Explain exactly how your evidence supports your point, giving further information to ensure that your reader understands its relevance. Link. Link the point, link the point you've just made back to your essay question, topic, or thesis. Definition of Rastafarianism. This is a social movement, messianic, millenarian established in Jamaica around 1930. It combines elements of religious prophecy, the Pan-Africanist philosophy, the Black Power Movement and the Defiance of Reggae Music. The four main points. Point one, Rastafarianism through reggae music has had an has had a significant impact on music cultures in North America and Europe. Point two, Rastafarian rituals, practices, and symbols all influence the extra-regional societies. Point three, Rastafari influences extra-regional societies by promoting Black pride and assist assistance in movements of mental freedom from slavery. Point four, the belief in a Black God all across the world. Good morning. Point one is that Rastafarianism through reggae music has had a significant impact on music cultures in North America and Europe. The example is the impact of reggae on the punk rock and pop cultures in Britain and rap music in the US. So explanation. In the 1970s, it impacted Western punk rock and pop cultures. It strongly influenced the punk movement partly thanks to Donnitz, who was a young Black Rastafarian man born in London to Jamaican parents. In 1977, Dalness was a DJ at the legendary nightclub that's known as The Roxy. There, he introduced reggae and dub to the rapidly growing punk rock scene. By doing so, he influenced British punk, ba pan, sorry, punk bands like The Clash and The Sex Pistols. In the 1950s and 1960s, hundreds of thousands of Jamaican migrants went to the US and settled in the Bronx, New York. These migrants remained in contact with Jamaica through regular trips, keeping in touch with the cultural evolution. Therefore, when toasting, also known as DJ style, which was derived from reggae, became popular in Jamaica in the late 1960s, it quickly reached New York as well. This Jamaican DJ culture, coupled with American urban influence, gave rise to rap music and hip hop culture in the 1970s. And this was aided by Jamaican born and Rastafarian DJ Cool Herc who moved to the Bronx, New York in 1967. He was instrumental in originating rap music and hip hop culture. In the following decades, numerous American rappers with the Jamaican background became famous such as Notorious B.I.G., Buster Rhymes, or Heavy D, among others. The link is today, punk artists such as Paul Weller and Billy Idol are still present in Britain and in the US, rap music is still prominent, but rappers such as Drake, Eminem, Lil Wayne, and Kendrick Lamar. Good morning again. The second point is Rastafarian rituals, practices, and symbols all influence the extra-regional societies. Example being, Rastafarians now live in various parts of the world, for example, New Zealand, Africa, Europe, Asia, and the United States. Two important rituals are reasonings and bingi. At the reasonings, the believers congregate and offer prayers, smoke ganja or marijuana, which is also considered to be their holy weed. In South Africa, where the smoking is also practiced, cannabis is used among the believers. It is done privately and is considered their way of life. Bingi are celebrations held through the night that include dancing as well as musical instruments. It is done to mark special occasions in Rastafarian in Rastafarianism. Steel pan, a musical instrument which is used by Rastafarians, is even taught in North America. This is also an example of multicultural education abroad. The colors used to symbolize Rastafarians are red, green, and gold. This combination of colors is widely worn together in extra-regional societies, and even the wearing of dreadlocks are worn as a trendy hairstyle, when in Rastafarianism, it is more spiritual to wear dreadlocks. 
The link is, Rastafarianism has indeed impacted extra-regional societies in that the symbols, rituals, and even practices are not only in Jamaica, but on multiple continents in the world. Point three, Rastafari influences extra-regional societies by promoting Black pride and assistance in movements of mental freedom from slavery. Example, chronics, Black is beautiful, reggae star chronic says, Black is beautiful, sorry, was a letter to Africans in America. Bob Marley, redemption song, explanation. Through the use of reggae music, the Rastafarians spread their ideology of Black beauty and freedom. Their songs entail their belief of restoration of their pride and self-confidence as Black people. They also continue to spread the message of mental freedom from their previous experiences of slavery experienced by the Black Africans and the continued, and this continued self-discrimination and prejudice faced on a daily basis. It spreads the message that your purpose is not dictated to by the mighty, but by the almighty. Rastafarians believe in the holistic revivalism of the Black people, showing their beauty, freedom, and pride, and to undo the damage caused by the enslavement of the Blacks by colonization, though through not only the Caribbean, but in Africa and the Americas. They utilize the Pan-Africanist beliefs of Marcus Garvey to realize the damage done by the colonizers and continue to try to under, undo it. The link, the comment section of Black is Beautiful is filled with positive comments and people from all over the world identifying with and enjoying the, the song. Redemption song is one of the most famous songs by Bob Marley, who is the most famous reggae singer. Point four, the belief in a black God all over the world all across the world. Example, Haile Siasia the I is regarded by Rastafarians as the god of the black race, as shown in Jeremiah 8, verse 21. Explanation, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt, I am black. Astonishment has taken, has taken hold on me. So that was in Jeremiah 8, 21. The fact that Jesus here refers to himself as, a, as black made them further believe that God is black. However, most Afri Rastas don't acknowledge Jesus as God, but as a mere messenger, while Haile Siasai was considered the true Messiah of the Africans. He was considered the survivor for purchasing and securing lands for the return of Africans. Repatriation. A large belief of the Rastas. They see the color black as a symbol of strength and resili resilience. The black or colored god has become more popular all over the world, resulting in many religious beliefs. Rastafarian. Rastafarianism, despite being indigenous to Jamaica, has spread its ideology across the world. This is the end of our presentation. All right. Thank you very much, group. This group five. Ladies, uh, at the next class on Wednesday, I will comment further on the, the different presentations. All right. Group six, I can go for me, please. Good morning, everyone. This is Group 6. And today we'll be presenting on the arts and the Caribbean development, specifically ways in which the arts have assisted human development in the Caribbean. Now, art forms are not 
only an expression of one's imagination, but they are also a true reflection of society and culture. The Caribbean has a variety of art forms, which range from dance, music, films or drama, sculpting, painting, and literature. Caribbean art forms may be considered hybrid or creolized due to the many different cultures and people that have entered into the Caribbean. Caribbean cultures include mixtures of practices from the indigenous peoples, the European colonizers, the Africans, and the indentured laborers. However, as time passes, the arts have contributed significantly to the human development of the Caribbean community, whereas it is in the development of the Caribbean identity, employment, education, and awareness. Now, what is human development? Human development is defined as a process of enlarging people's freedom and opportunities and improving their well being. Humans are the means and the ends of development. They are the ones who affect the quality of their lives. And development is able to broaden people's choices. Development is achieved through the eradication of the barriers of the four keys to development. These are equity, empowerment, productivity, and sustainability. Now, the next thing we're going to ask is what are the arts? And an art form is defined as a piece of work that is an expression of creative imagination. We will be looking at the Caribbean identity. So the arts develop as the art, the arts aid, the art aid in human development through the Caribbean identity. So our Caribbean identity refers to how we assess ourselves in relation to others the values we hold, our perspectives on the environment and the past, as well as our aspirations for ourselves and our society. The arts have been used to unite Caribbean people in the diaspora and to develop their identity. For example, the Caribana Festival, known to locals, as the Toronto celebration of Caribbean culture and traditions is one of the largest festivals in North America, bringing together over 2 million people each year. The carnival was first orchestrated in 1967 and represents the culture of over 10 significant Caribbean countries. Majority of the art, art forms performed at the festivals include music, from genres such as soca, calypso, and the steel pan, dances such as the maypole, drama pieces, and films. The carnival would also showcase Caribbean produce, cuisines, and fashion. A sense of identity and belongingness is developed when Caribbean people and artists of the different art forms are able to successively and confidently promote and enjoy enjoy their culture, both locally and internationally. As presented in the example, this international recognition facilitates the development of Caribbean identity through their achievements in literature, music, and dance. The successes of our artists give the Caribbean people pride. This development suppresses Eurocentric beliefs and cultural imperialism from the European colonizers and leads to the empowerment of the human being and additionally, the Caribbean human development. All right, now the other way where art forms can assist with human development is employment. The development of the arts across the Caribbean this diaspora has been a significant avenue through which the Caribbean people have generated wealth to entrepreneurship and employment. 
In the Caribbean di diaspora, numbers of persons have generated wealth and improved their standard of living through creativity with the arts, managing and producing the arts, as well as creating entertainment through the arts. For example, the reggae icon of Bob Marley profited tremendously from the cultural music he created. Oliver Samuels, formerly known as the Jamaican King of Comedy, is a comedian and actor who has made his livelihood from drama and films, and Edna, Edna Manley, known as the mother of Jamaica's modern art movement, was a sculptor who taught and established the Jamaica School of Art, which paved the way for many current artists in today's world. So in today's Jamaica. So, also continuing, the arts farms have also generated employment to the music and film producers, for example, Adija, aka Vibes Cartel Palmer, is our major dance hall and reggae music producer and the center stage productions. Organizations and individuals who host parties and festivals also profit from the arts. Additionally, Persons who also gain employment include backstage workers, musicians, which means instrument players, back, backup singers, and entertainment and catering services. Now, in relation to the explanation, is it true the arts that language, customs, dress, and way of life can pass from one generation to the next? Human capital can therefore be developed through the arts, whether it be direct or indirect, indirect employment. The arts correspond with a number of industries such as fashion, culinary, carpentry and construction, beauty and cosmetics, and education, etc. And linking it all together, the arts have created both direct and indirect in employment for people of the Caribbean diaspora. This has contributed significantly to the Caribbean's human development as it continues to generate a source of income, reducing poverty and increasing the living standard of the Caribbean people. So the arts have also aided Caribbean human development through education. Education gives us a, de a definite, definite path to follow to lead our lives by principles and give us the freedom of expression. It frees our minds from the prejudices and motivates it to think with logical, to think with logic and reason. The, heart, the arts have, de have helped to develop human development through education. During the colonial period, education was a privilege only granted to certain groups and classes of people. However, currently education has become a right to each person and people have the free will of choosing what they want to study and what field they want to go in. The Caribbean Examinations Council, CXE, established in 1972, offers to students certified art form courses in drama, music, painting, and sculpting, as well as indirect fields such as clothing and fashion. Caribbean students receiving the opportunity to be involved in these courses gives them chance to branch off into new careers and professions. Additionally, the arts aid in the development of the brain, their character and relaxation. With the arts being taught in schools, students become innovators of their culture and involved with their country and well-being. The arts assist in the Caribbean human development through education as it, as it gives the freedom of expression, evolves creativity, and aids in the personal development of the people in the society. All right, the final point that we want to discuss is awareness. Awareness. Awareness speaks to having the knowledge or being conscious of a situation or issue. The different art forms in the Caribbean over the years have been used to present information to the public on issues that affect the Caribbean diaspora in a way that is understandable and entertaining. The evidence. <clears throat> the music genre reggae 
The words of the song are often used to tell a story about the problems being faced. For example, in the song, Blood Money by Protégé, the artist, the artist shares his views on the political corruption in Jamaica. As stated in the lyric, was about to be a politician too. Maybe then I could make any decision look. Maybe then I make a hundred million disappear. Then me act like me not care. What you vote me back in there. Another example is seen in sculptures being made from plastic bottles. These bring awareness to the issues of global warming and plastic pollution in the Caribbean. Additionally, in the poem entitled, The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Employed Her Son, the Jamaican poet Lorna Goodison speaks on the effects of youths being recruited into gangs by presenting it in a way where a grieving mother confronts a gang member who is basically sending her son to an early death. The explanation. <clears throat> with art forms being with art forms being a great way to transfer information in a palatable way, sorry, palatable way, it comes to no one as a surprise that they would be used for the spread of awareness. Using art for awareness is good as it gives people a chance to voice their opinions for the general public to hear or see. This also gives them the opportunity to to take this information and to use it to prove themselves. As in taking precautions to ensure they do not go down that path or get themselves in a sticky situation. Sorry, the link. Using art to spread awareness is great for the human development as it improves the mind, provides opportunity for one, for one to express an issue freely and allows an individual to hear this information and protect themselves. Others an equality, equality of life. The arts are tools used to express the struggle for justice and against oppression. This can be liberating for a society that tends to be still to, be, to still be tied to its colonial past and negative attitudes towards gender, race, color, and wealth. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you guys for listening. All right, very good points, this group. Uh, group one, McDonald group, Anya. You guys still want to redeem yourself? Yes, please, sir. All right, go ahead, Thomas, please. One second, sir. Okay. Caribbean art and culture. Music is one of the many ways that people use to express themselves, what they believe, and also where they are from, which attracts people from all walks of life. The distinct styles of Caribbean people can be seen through a variety of music, such as reggae and calypso, and the musical instruments, such as the steel pan. The musical trends differ from country to country, representing their history through beat and language. Caribbean Creole is commonly found in many songs of the region, which makes it even more original and attractive to tourists. As such, artists across the Caribbean benefit from foreigners as they travel to the islands just to experience their music in live and living color. Not only does it contribute by providing a means of income, but it also provides a way for international persons to understand Caribbean culture and lifestyle. For example, Reggae Sum Fest, one of the largest festivals in Jamaica and the Caribbean, played a major factor in drawing people from overseas. In addition to so showcasing the music of the islands, 
It has more importantly generated earnings for all of those in the industry and any affiliated with it. With their pocketbooks alongside them, this industry has caused for the employment of artists, big and small, Caribbean cruises workers, and more. Therefore, it is safe to say that music has contributed greatly to the development of the Caribbean. Caribbean festivals are distinctive in their use of customs that are presented through the application of dress, music, dance, and art making. It's a sight to behold and a culture to enjoy. The influence of early settlers on the economic, cultural, and social life in the Caribbean has heavily impacted festivals of the region. These, these reflect the region's history, connecting present-day society to the past, and at the same time, including contemporary elements. Caribbean festivals showcase the creati creativity of West Indians through their original costumes, music, and dance, which blends a number of ethnic groups together. This inclusive culture draws, creati draws creatives and lovers of art from all over the world, providing jobs for entertainers, costume designers, dressmakers, and more. A lot of small entrepreneurs also reap the benefits of these stories seeking to have an authentic festival experience. One of the most popular festivals in the Caribbean is Carnival. It was originally practiced by Trinidadians, but over time, other Caribbean countries adapted it which transformed it into a regional activity. The generation of foreign exchange through the creation of jobs of artists and other crafty business owners helps to find, helps to improve the economy. Therefore, it can be said that festivals contribute to the Caribbean's development. Artisanal crafts draw creatives and lovers of art from all over the world to the Caribbean. Artisanal crafts play, an, play such an important role in our culture as it dates back to the first indigenous inhabitants of the region. These items made by talented civilians using materials like bamboo to make piggy banks, wood to make rasta figures, and the list goes on. They're all so unique to each country and culture across the Caribbean hence making them attractive to tourists. These crafted items have been a great source of income for many West Indians as such, and by extension, the respective countries and the region at large. For example, the Fern Gully located in St. Anne, Jamaica is known to be a hotspot for a variety of Rasta figurines and other Jamaican inspired crafts with it being a common route for buses and cars traveling to and from the North Coast, especially tourists touring the island, this art form has definitely contributed to the development of the Caribbean. More citizens are employed, whether it be formally or informally, by selling unique craft items on the sides of roads or in designated shops, and so decreasing poverty, potentially crime, and increasing the standard of living for citizens. Um, culinary arts. The culinary industry provides an opportunity for persons visiting the Caribbean to enjoy the varying flavor palettes of the region. Culinary arts in the Caribbean shows the creative adaptions of the traditional food stylings from Europe, Africa, India, China, and the pre-Columbian people. These global influences combined with indigenous Caribbean in ingredients and techniques have played a role in defining the evolution of the modern Caribbean cuisine. Salt fish or salted cod is eaten widely across the Caribbean. In Jamaica, Akean salt fish is the national dish as it is, as is roast breadfruit and salt fish in St. Vincent and duck canoe and saltfish in Antigua. These traditional dishes are some reasons tourists are drawn to the Caribbean 
The flavors and spices associated with these cuisines are the reasons why many international persons are drawn to the Caribbean as these items are often unusual or considered exotic, hence increasing its marketability and the economy at large. All right, one second. It is Dukono. Dukono, okay. Which, which we call it, we call it Dukono too. The African word for it is Dukono. But we in Jamaica, we call it Blue Jaws. Anybody know of it? They look, they, they, it's yes, they usually, sir. yes, they put the cornmeal and put, uh, sometimes they put like, raisins and stuff in it and they tie it with the banana leaf wait most of you are not familiar with it i know it sir i've heard about it sir i know okay. it it tastes good it tastes good <laughs> go ahead for me good presentation okay. thus far thank you for example, the Caribbean ackee is actually quite poisonous when not prepared correctly, but eaten nationally by Jamaicans. And as such, drawing culinary enthusiasts to try this somewhat dangerous delicacy. Tourism is a major economic earner in the Caribbean, with these dishes being a major pull factor. Chefs, hotel operators, and restaurants restaurants will especially benefit from international visitors and even locals, therefore keeping money inside the country while gaining external currency. In conclusion. Right. In conclusion, the Caribbean's trademarks such as its music, festivals, cuisine and crafts play a major role in the development of the Caribbean. The creation of jobs in the tourism and affiliated industries not only impacts citizens monetarily, but also keeps them encouraged in a productive field which could possibly reduce crime. On a large scale, the economy is boosted, the standard of living and quality of life of West Indians is improved, and positive vibes are circulated all around. This is the end of our presentation. All right, thank you very much. Uh, group one, the presentations are good thus far. I'm going to give, I'm going to comment, I'll give you a more detailed comment, comment on the presentation on Wednesday. Remember, tomorrow I'm going to ask this class, please, to finish, go on the Google Classroom and complete the assignment. One is, I think you have two multiple choice on it. They are very easy multiple choice. Uh, once you listen to the recording, you are able to answer the multiple choice. And uh, there's a short answer, pretty much easy. Just go onto the Google Classroom and complete the assignment. Uh, one more thing. The, oh, we return. All right, so we have face-to-face -face here on Thursday. And uh, on Thursday, we are going to go through the paper two. And on Wednesday, I'll give the comments about the presentation and then go through the paper one. All right, so that's, what we're, that's our plan for the rest of the week. And you know we don't meet tomorrow when we're not meeting tomorrow. Uh, so I think that covers everything, ladies. Thank you very much for the presentation. And we we meet again on third, on Wednesday, sorry, on Wednesday. Okay, sir. Bye. Bye, bye sir. Bye, bye, bye sir. Bye.